dear students uh, welcome to swayam shiksha uh, we are coming up with one more third theme here for upsc prelims so i hope uh, we are adding value to your preparation and uh, especially the first two themes were on money supply and types of money and today we'll try to understand the different types of ratios so there are some ratios which are asked in the exam uh, which are purely related to banking system so today we'll be doing three types of ratios which are very important for upsc prelims so this was the previous question this was something like what is uh, the importance of the term interest coverage ratio of a firm in india so this was something related to a particular firm okay so before we try to solve this question what is more important is the areas around this question what can be other types of questions that can be asked in this particular section so let's try to understand uh, interest coverage ratio so what i mean by interest coverage ratio so this interest coverage ratio is also called as debt and profitability ratio now why is it so important is in the recent past NPAs in the banking system have increased. So banks, before they are giving loans to a particular firm or a company, they have to look for the strength of the company. Is the company in the position to take debt or is the company capable of paying the interest? Now, this will indicate the stress-taking, absorbing capacity of a particular firm. Now, banks have to understand this particular aspect of a firm before giving a loan. So that means, can a particular company cover its interests through its profits is something which the bank has to check before giving a loan to a particular firm. So in simple words, it is basically called as a debt and profitability ratio. It is basically called as a debt and profitability, debt and profitability ratio. So that means for a company, uh, how easily a firm can pay the interest. Okay, so in simple words, it can also be written as profit divided by interest to be paid. I'm writing it here profit divided by interest to be paid. So I'll take something like the profit before tax payments divided by the interest to be paid. So now, suppose let's say the profit of the company is 100 rupees and the interest to be paid by the firm is 50. It means the interest coverage ratio is 2. That means this company or this firm can cover its, uh, cover its interest two times. Okay, so with its profits. This is what we mean by interest coverage ratio. Now, suppose it is something like 100. Profit is 100 but the interest is only 10. That means the company can cover its interest 10 times with its profits. So what does it mean? Higher the interest coverage ratio, it is better for the firm. It means the firm can cover its interest payments. Okay, so more coverage of its interest payments through its profits. So ideally, if it is 2, it is seen as okay. The interest coverage ratio of 2 is optimal in the sense it is minimum that the interest coverage ratios are at least 2. But some extraordinary firms also have interest coverage ratios of 10. So this is what we have to understand with this term called interest coverage ratio. It will indicate the stress or the threat for the company. And banks have to analyze this interest coverage ratio. That becomes very important that the banks have to analyze this interest coverage ratio. Now let's try to understand one more important term here. Okay, so this is called as the slippage ratio. Now, this can be asked in the exam. So, what does this slippage ratio indicate? This is a ratio which says how good loans are turning out to become bad. So, that means at the beginning of the year, you're going to tally what are the good loans or the good assets. And at the end, you're going to check how much of this good loan has become an NPA or turned out to become bad. So this is what a slippage ratio is going to indicate. So this ratio will indicate the rate at which good loans are turning out to become bad. That is what you have to understand. Good loans are turning out to become NPA. So I can write it as fresh, fresh accretion, fresh accretion of new NPAs, 
fresh accretion of new NPAs divided by divided by total standard assets. That is the total total standard means these were loans which are paid on time. So total standard assets at the beginning of the year multiplied by hundred. Okay, so what does that mean? Suppose let's say last year the slippage ratio was twelve percent. Now this year the slippage ratio has become fifteen. It means the slippage has been by almost like three percentage points. Three percentage points. That means the number of NPAs have increased by three percentage points. Okay, so slippage ratio. If you talk about slippage ratio, lower the slippage ratio, it is better. Why? Because Fresh accretion of new NPAs, okay, divided by the total standard assets at the beginning of the year. This is at the beginning, uh, at the beginning of the year, multiplied by hundred. So last year, if the slippage ratio is twelve, now this year it is fifteen. That means the bank slippage, bank has slipped by three percentage. Bank has slipped by three percentage. That means the credit cost for the bank is going to increase. The cost or the amount the bank has to maintain. That is basically. We can say uh, the amount the bank has to spend on maintaining such risk is increasing. That is basically the credit risk of the bank is going to increase. This is called as the slippage ratio. Another simple ratio we'll try to understand here, okay, which is called as the currency deposit ratio. This is a very simple term, in fact. Okay, so currency deposit ratio is nothing but what we should understand is it is the currency held by public. Currency, currency held by public in the hand. Currency held by public in the hand. Okay, divided by deposits of public in banks. Deposits of public in bank. Now, what is this? Suppose, let's say, suppose hundred rupees is there with a person. Now he is putting fifty rupees in the fifty rupees in the bank. That is the denominator, and fifty rupees he is holding. Okay, so that means here the currency deposit ratio is one. That means if he is getting hundred rupees, he will put fifty rupees in the bank and he'll hold fifty rupees in his hand. So currency held by public in his hand divided by the deposits of public in the banks. This is very important. Now will this have an impact on money supply? For detailed understanding of money supply, go to our theme one, the first theme where I've explained M1, M2, M3, along with how money multiplier effect happens, etc. So it is true that yes, over a long term period, if more money is going into the bank, more money is going into the bank, then automatically money multiplier effect will be higher. I have explained how it multiplies. Okay, but in a general note, if the currency deposit ratio is one, means if somebody is getting hundred, he is putting fifty in the bank and is holding fifty in his hand. Okay, and if the currency held by public in hand is more, then the currency deposit ratio is going to increase. Suppose putting seventy rupees in his hand, then only thirty rupees into the bank, then this will become seventy by thirty. Okay, so that is what we have to understand. Similarly, there are other simple ratios like the reserve deposit ratio, etc. Reserve deposit is something like we keep. The bank keeps in the form of reserve. So, bank is keeping in the form of reserve out of the total deposits. Okay, that is it. It includes CRR, SLR, etc. So, more is the reserve deposit ratio, more it is saving in the bank in the form of CRR and SLR. Less would be the money supply in the economy. This is about the reserve deposit ratio. So, higher is the reserve deposit ratio than Less would be the money supply or the multiplier effect in the economy. So these are some few basic concepts and other ratios like capital adequacy ratios or leverage ratios and Bessel norms will come up in the next theme. And I hope I've added value to your uh, preparation. And please do uh, subscribe to our channel if you like our videos and share it with all the aspirants, serious aspirants, because it will be of immense help for their prelims. Now. Let's try to go to this question which was asked. This was a previous question of UPSC. So this question says, what is the importance of the term interest coverage ratio? Now this interest coverage ratio, what is the importance of this term interest coverage ratio? Now let's try to understand here. It helps in understanding the present risk of a firm that a bank is going to give loan to. Yes, the risk of the firm can be understood. So profit, 
डिवाइडेड बाय द इंटरेस्ट कवरेज ओके सो मोर इज द इंटरेस्ट कवरेज रेशो बेटर इज इट फॉर द बैंक टू गिव लोन द स्ट्रॉगर इज द फर्म टू कवर इट्स इंटरेस्ट सो इट हेल्प इन इवेल्युएटिंग द इमर्जिंग रिस्क ऑफ अ फर्म दट अ बैंक इज गोइंग टू गिव लोन टू दिस इज ऑल्सो ट्रू दिस इज ऑल्सो ट्रू द हायर इज द बोरोइंग फर्म लेवल ऑफ इंटरेस्ट कवरेज रेशो वर्स इज इट्स अबिलिटी टू सर्विस इट इज रॉन्ग हायर इज योर इंटरेस्ट कवरेज रेशो बेटर इज योर अबिलिटी टेन दोज एंटिटीज विद इंटरेस्ट कवरेज रेशो ऑफ टेन आर फार बेटर ऑफ सो द आंसर शुड बी वन एंड टू सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट all the ratios at one place if we revise then any question that comes up in exam we can do it i hope uh, you have understood the video and uh, please keep watching please keep sharing and and please do comment your comments are a booster uh, which will uh, indicate that yes you are following and so that i can put in even more effort to make your preparation easy signing off thank you